right, so this is part three, weather processes and phenomena, part three of atmosphere and weather. And throughout this, we'll go through smaller processes and they'll be quite separate. So it's a lot easier to follow. Similar to the last section, it's not as long, but similar to the last section, just make sure you understood what was said before moving on. Otherwise you might get caught out with previous information and it might not make as much sense. So the atmospheric moisture processes. So going between solid liquid gas, you've got evaporation that we talked about before with latent heat transfer. So we see that energy is used and is absorbed in order to move the molecules. So this causes water to evaporate into a gas. Condensation is the reverse where water vapor is cooled to its dew point. So that is a key word there that is going to keep coming up, um, so it's a good one then to consider, leading to the formation of clouds, fog, or dew. So the condensation releases latent heat. So the latent heat that was used in the evaporation process is released here, and this influences weather patterns. Okay, so condensation then causes the production of clouds, and also enough of it then causes precipitation. Freezing then is where the liquid turns into solid ice below zero degrees and again it releases latent heat to stabilize the atmosphere. So that can come in the form of ice and then in precipitation like snow and hail. Melting then comes at anything above zero degrees and again it's absorbing latent heat as it Deposition is when water vapor turns from a gas into a solid without turning into a liquid in between and sublimation is the opposite where it goes from a solid to a gas without becoming liquid in between. Okay, so those are the six main processes that are happening and we also need to know if they're releasing or taking in heat, that latent heat transfer. Condensation is quite important because it's what forms precipitation. So what we want to imagine is a dew point at 15 degrees. Now remember this can change. This is just the one that I'm using here. And the temperature of the ground is 32 degrees Celsius. So it's quite a lot higher than the actual dew point, which means that the uh, air parcel then, we won't find that the vapor in there is going to condense. As it rises up, we see the temperature decreases in temperature, but it still hasn't matched the dew point yet. It's only when it gets to this point up here that it reaches temperature reaches the dew point and we start to see condensation and that's why clouds form at this point. So condensation then is, as we said before, releasing latent heat and as it's doing that then we start to see clouds form. This expansion of the air as it's cooling down and reaching the dew point is known as adiabatic expansion. and this adiabatic cooling then continues until it reaches its dew point and then it's able to condense. So at this point, the air that condenses has lots of water vapor uh, in the air and it also has water liquid. So that liquid then is able to group together maybe around something like a condensation nuclei, something that multiple drops can uh, coalesce around and become larger droplets and they can start to fall potentially as precipitation. Precipitation then, there's two main theories. The Bergeron theory looks at water freezing in clouds. Ice crystals are growing, coalescing in the clouds, becoming snowflakes, and they're there long enough to become quite large. So we have updrafts that are moving up through the, the clouds and causing the smaller particles that are too light to get um, blown back up into the cloud and continue to coalesce and grow. So this continues until the updraft is uh, lessened or that the actual ice crystals are big enough. And then they begin to fall. As they're falling, they start to melt. And as they melt, then they turn into liquid, right, water. And those are raindrops. The coalescence theory then is also looking at updrafts and downdrafts. So we see that ice can continuously be moving up and down in a cloud for a long period of time. This can, again, cause coalescence and make them large enough to fall as rain. Convectional rainfall then, uh, we would associate this with low pressure like in the last unit. So low pressure is indicating an area that has a high amount of heat energy and the air begins to rise as it's less dense than the air around it. So when we see that going up in the low pressure area here, we were associating this with the low pressure equatorial area, for example, of the ITCZ. That's where we would start to see convectional rainfall. So the air goes up until the temperature matches the dew point. We get 
hope that helped. If you want to continue learning, the rest of the course is below in our link. Um, you can sign up and learn there through all these videos. There's over 10 hours of videos of the content. Um, and this teaches you everything about the case studies, the concepts in each section, and you can just take it at your own pace. Um, within each course, then you'll get a PDF printout, some short questions and a video that just discusses the different parts uh, of the course. So those are the full videos there and should give you all the information, which should give you all the information that you need throughout the course in order to successfully answer any exam questions. We also have a second course that's just dedicated to the exam paper skills where you'll learn what a good example is, what a bad example is, why different scores are awarded for different reasons, and it should be able to elevate your uh, ability to write these answers. It's also going to give you examples, so you've got like 80 example uh, exam paper questions to look at and to learn from, and to potentially use some of the information in that as you're going forward. So it's also a, a good way to learn too. Okay guys, if you like, please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to answer them.